This is one of the most prestigious cut of meat in the world. This whole piece is called a chateaubriand, which is the center cut of the tenderloin. Now, as I take a slice off, you can clearly see the intramuscular fat. This lets you know that it is not a regular grade of steak. And if you guessed Wagyu, you are right. You see this little marbling between the meat of white? That is what makes this much more desirable than anything you find on your regular supermarket. However, this is extremely expensive, but most importantly, it is meat. Unlike the star of the show today, it's called Juicy Marble's Whole Cut Loin. And supposedly, it is the only vegan steak that actually has intramuscular fat. Well, we're gonna be the judge of that, because my nephew can sense vegan food from a mile away. Now, cooking instructions is pretty simple. Keep it refrigerated, do not refreeze, which is a good sign, and most importantly, always cook to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I went ahead and took it out of the bag. Now, I'll be honest with you, this looks like Play-Doh. It does not feel like meat, it is very dense. At the same time, I was extremely curious to find out what was inside. And as you can see, wow, Wow. Now that was surprising. Even though it does not have intramuscular fat like the previous steak, it looks like meat to me. I mean, I've done several other experiments before trying out fake meat, and it did not look good at all. However, this one is different. When you take a closer look, you can see that they tried really hard, and that gave me hope. So I went ahead and continued to cut out some steaks. My goal was to have one and a half inches thick. As you know, this is the perfect thickness for steaks. But just to really understand the texture a little bit more, I decided to slice a very small amount. And as I did so, wow, it really resembles meat. However, it resembles cooked meat, not raw. So that was super interesting to me. I mean, take a look at this. Doesn't it look like pulled pork? I mean, honestly, comparing this with Beyond Meat is something else. I can understand why many people are saying that this is the Wagyu of plant-based meat. However, I'm not convinced until we try it. Because take a look at them side by side. You can clearly see which one is real and which one is not. But at the same time, do you think it can fool someone just by the look? Does it look like real meat to you? Let me know in the comments down below. Because now that we have all of the steaks ready, the next thing to do is to go ahead and season them. For that, I wanted to keep it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. And like always, one of the most important things is to make sure to season all sides. The last thing we want is to have unseasoned fake meat. Because as you can see, once I was done, they were perfectly seasoned and they are now ready to be cooked. But just in case these do not turn out fantastic, I went ahead and made an incredible side dish for us today. And I'll be honest with you, this one is delicious. But most importantly, Importantly, it is ridiculously easy to make and here's how. The first and most important thing to make is the filling. I first started with some ground beef. I'm using 80-20. Then I immediately threw in some white onions. This will infuse the flavor and cook everything up at the same time. Once I got a nice color, I went ahead and threw in some tomato paste, a little bit of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and mixed everything together. As I started to get a little bit of color, I went ahead and threw in some chicken stock. This is to deglaze the pan. You can also use wine or anything else you like, but I feel like chicken stock is just gonna make the perfect flavor. And at the same time, on a different pan, I went ahead and crispened up some bacon. Because you know, we gotta cook some real meat on this channel. Once the bacon was fully cooked and dried, I threw them into the pan, followed by some finely diced jalapeno, Worcestershire sauce, and some gochujang Korean chili paste. Mix everything well and combine these ingredients together, because my feeling was done. And I mean, take a look at this thing. That looks already delicious enough to eat, but we're gonna take it to a whole nother level. And instead of making my own dough, I'm gonna be using this. The one that you can buy it in any supermarket. You Using your fingers, just open up the dough. Then if you want a nice presentation, just cut out some slits just like this. Add some mozzarella cheese on the bottom, followed by that incredible filling we just made. And make sure to be generous with it. As now the next step is to go ahead and start closing it up. Once that was done, it is now ready to be baked. So into the oven it went at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. As soon as it was fully baked, the next step was to go ahead and brush some butter on it. And we all know butter makes everything better. To wrap it up, all I did was add a little bit of parsley on top and today's side dish is done. Now let's be honest here. It is bread, cheese and meat. Come on now. There's no way that this is not gonna be delicious. However, I cannot say the same exact thing about today's steak. One of them I'm very confident but the other one as you already know I am curious to find out how it's gonna taste and most importantly what are my taste tester gonna think. Because the only thing left to do now is to go ahead and cook them. First I'll be putting a nice wonderful sear. Because once that's done I'll be cooking them in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And for that, I'll be using my wireless thermometers. So now I say, it is enough talking and it is time to grill some beautiful steaks. So let's do it.
right, everybody, here we got our beautiful steak, your favorite. Filet mignon. And I got a little side dish today. Looks good. Right? It's a little simple, but, but, but it's good. It doesn't look too simple to me. It, it looks good. I'm just, I'm sad that it's on that side of the table. <laughs> oh, really? I would like to get to it first. Yeah, but at least you got the steaks closer to you. I don't know, Google. It looks like something went wrong here. So here we have two types of meat. We have a nice, beautiful filet mignon from my meat dealer. And this one right here is a new Wagyu that they came out with. I bought this thing and I'm super... Why are you laughing? There's no way that's Wagyu. Every like this, this thing is falling apart. It looks drier than the Sahara Desert. Dude, You're not telling I'm me that that's Wagyu. I'm telling you, I, I don't know why it's a little bit shredded. Maybe I overcooked it a little bit or something. May I? Yes. <laughs> so here's the deal. Which one would you guys like to try first? Uh, I say this one. But... Filet mignon. Dig in, please. Oh my God. <laughs> this is how... Oh, this is the smell I want in a steak. Oh my God. All right, let's give it a try and let you guys know. Enough talking. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. No, oh. Oh. Whoa. Uh, you enjoy Mind it. your business. You enjoy it. Mind your business. Yo, what do you think? It's a delicious steak, so succulent, so moist, mm -hmm. extremely tender like a filet mignon always is. Beautiful charcoal crust that just brings it all together. Love, love, love the steak. The thing about filet mignon mm. that people don't really understand is the difference in texture on the inside compared to like the difference in texture on the inside of let's say a ribeye or a New York strip. It is so much softer. Yeah. yeah. For me, this will never be thumbs down. This will always be thumbs up. Gotta say, this is a delicious steak. I love it. It is very flavorful, extremely juicy. Everything you would expect from a steak. But now I'm excited to try this one. Are you guys ready? No. Side dish. Side, side dish? dish? Side dish. Okay, go for it. Big in and Joe. This looks very well presented. It looks fancy, but it's not. Let's give it a try right now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, come on. Now that's good right there. Wow. There's a lot of textures going on here. Crispy outside. The mm. bread is also nice and fluffy on the inside. You have like this crumbly ground beef. I can taste some bacon. It's rich. It has... It's savory as hell. Yeah. That's the, that's the word for this. Do you guys enjoy the side dish? Very much. good. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the deal. This, I'll be honest, you guys already got me. It is not a Wagyu, but it is a wild animal. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of wild animal. It is very difficult to get this kind of meat. It's wild. You never had it. I never had it. Let me know how it tastes. Be as honest as you can. Please dig in. I mean, we, I mean we, we're all hunters. We love, I mean, I don't know about, you never hunted, huh? I, I, I caught a fish for one time. <laughs> I caught a fish. <laughs> Rob from Deer Meat for dinner. We gotta take this man hunting, please. We gotta take him hunting. What do you wanna hunt first? Not this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Whatever this is, I don't wanna hunt this. This does not, <laughs> this does not smell good. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. You cracked him. You cracked him. <laughs> He's dying over here. I can't even breathe. That was so funny. Rob, let us know in the comments down below what we should hunt with Leo, and uh, we're going to make it happen. Hey, shout out to Rob. Probably one of the nicest YouTubers I've ever met. Rob is my brother, everybody. That's all I can say. With all that being said, wild mid time. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. No. No. Oh. Oh. I think this animal, you know, had a little problem. <laughs> I did not enjoy that, everybody. It was not great. The way it breaks apart in your mouth is, is very different. It, it doesn't have any like juice flowing from it or any juice at all when you take a bite. It is dry. It, it doesn't have like a very nice flavor either. I don't know, it just has like one overtone of just savoriness that has no real depth at all. It's kind of rubbery. The taste is pretty bad. Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat that again. I think the only redeeming quality that this piece of meat has is the charcoal on it. I will say that even though the flavor is a little bit and awkward, the awkward. texture at least it reminds me of meat. It's not awkward. No? It's bad. <laughs> so here's the deal. It is not meat. No. It is plant-based. Oh my God. We are carnivores, everybody. We love meat, so to us, it's not very appealing. If you think by any chance that this is the same thing as a steak, no. Google question, is this supposed to be the vegan version of that? Yes. Then they, they are way off. But is it right to say that it has a 
feeling and a texture of meat, not a steak. I think that's fair. You guys need to get some juicier plants, man. This is <laughs> Yeah, these this, plants this need is, a little bit more juice. It's too dry. <laughs> it's too dry. But anyway, guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything's always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.